Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be looking at the RunCam Wi-Fi Link 2 which is an open IPC based HD FPV system, uh, an alternative, a much cheaper and open source alternative to DJI and WalkSnail systems. Now we need some sort of receiver to get the video to a screen or the goggles uh, so they also provide the dual band wireless USB adapter. We'll have a closer look at all of these things um, in a minute. And that will get you connected to uh, a smartphone, uh, a tablet, or a, a laptop that you can download an app that will decode the video. Or in exciting news, Runcam are developing this proper video receiver, which would connect via HDMI into your goggles or uh, or a screen. The video receiver hasn't been released yet, so I won't be doing a review on that yet. Uh, and it's stu still a few teething problems. I haven't actually got it working yet. They say it's very finicky with uh, the HDMI, but that will allow recording proper connection into your goggles. So that's very exciting for the future. Not quite yet. So today we'll look at the video transmitter camera and the Wi-Fi link. Now, if we have a quick look at the open IPC org website this is the open source project on github and you can see these are all the companies that are supporters of the open ipc project and we can see runcam here that means that runcam is cooperating and uh, supporting and contributing to the open ipc project which is the spirit of any open source project uh, now the other system that i reviewed a little while ago has not yet Put their support behind the open IC, ipc project so um, that is a, a big tick for runcam and uh, not very impressive by eSheen. so that's something to be aware of this was sent to me by runcam for the review so we'll have a look at the runcam site and there's the uh, price in australian dollars for the video transmitter camera and the wi-fi card you can just buy the camera and the transmitter by itself for a little bit cheaper 143 Australian dollars and other currencies, uh, euros, we've got uh, 64 euros. So uh, a lot cheaper than DJI and walk snail systems. Now they're saying video and audio recording. I don't think that's quite true just yet. You can do audio recording direct onto the SD card in the um, Wi-Fi Link 2 unit, uh, but that adds latency to it apparently. I don't think we can do video recording yet uh, maybe you can with the proper video receiver this is showing the two connection options the coming wi-fi link receiver uh, but we're going to be looking at the network card method connected to a phone and running a, uh, an app that makes it work as a ground station sensor is imx 415 uh, field of view 160 degrees it is a 16 9 aspect ratio camera so it's not squished up on my phone which is great these are the Resolutions 1080, 60, 1080, 90 or 720, 120 frames per second. Power supply 9 to 22 volts. Connected up to your flight control board. So let's have a quick look at the manual here. Here's the manual, uh, all the components. Four M2 screws going into the bottom. They're 25.5 millimeters apart. So I've designed a little um, mount for it, 3D printed mount, which will be available in Thingiverse. Read the description to get access to that. And being run cam of course it's compatible directly with this bdb flight control board there's a cable that connects directly from the video transmitter to there are six wires in the cable but the two on the end which would for dji would be uh, ground and s bus uh, they're not connected basically so we've just got voltage ground receive and transmit cables and to set up your ground station you need to download this pixel pilot app and load it onto your phone or tablet select the channel and set the video codec. These are all preset now, so it is really just directly plug and play, which is wonderful. The Wi-Fi Link 2 does have an SD card in it, SD card slot at least, so you can do uh, firmware upgrades by just putting the, the uh, firmware files onto the SD card, which is great because you uh, don't have to rely on a PC-based laptop or computer to do that seeing i've only got mac configuration files i'll show you how to do that you just put the sd card in and it generates the ini file which we can um, edit in a text editor these are some of the parameters you can change uh, it does have ethernet port 
connection as well. Configuring with a PC ground station, uh, you would need to uh, download this, this XE program here, which as I said, is not something I can do with my Mac stuff. And a bit of stuff about uh, OSD information. I'm just using the iNav OSD uh, set up on the flight control board using the avatar layout. I'll show you that in a minute and that just works fine. And a few more details. All right, so let's go back and have a look at it on the bench now. So here's the box. Typical pack packaging, uh, manual link there and help. And the cables we get. Uh, we get an Ethernet cable there uh, if you're going to connect it to an Ethernet network and do your configuration on your on your network. Uh, but I don't like that system myself. Nuts and bolts there. Lens cover. And we get a UART cable here. Full direct connection to a flight control board and a couple of uh, IPC connection antennas. Sleeve di dipoles there. Just need to undo this little screw, take off the cover, click them in, put the cover back over to connect the antennas. So we have connections, that's the fan connection there, that is for uh, connecting the ethernet cable. This one is the UART connection for the flight control board. MIPI cable there. And SD card slot on this side here. Might as well put an SD card in there and uh, we can pull off the any file or um, configuration file and show how to edit that. So this is the version 2. It's much neater and smaller than version 1. Version 1 was quite clunky. Uh, this is uh, a properly designed and properly finished little unit. Very nice indeed. There's the camera. And let's just plug it straight into, it goes straight into the HD FPV port in the Speedy B. Make sure we get the orientation correct. Plugs in there like that. Now we need to get the receiver set up. So we'll get the um, dual band Wi-Fi USB adapter. It's just a network card. There's the network card there. We get a couple of very chunky antennas and a USB adapter there. So connect up the antennas. Got a cover there. We just plug in the USB A side and we've got a USB C connection there, which will connect into your smartphone so that will go in there like that so there we have the network card plugged into the usb video transmitter and camera plugged into into the flight control board let's plug in a battery now open up pixel pilot it will probably open it up itself actually And we just wait a little while. And there we go. That is totally plug and play. And you can see I've got my own iNav OSD working there as well. All the telemetry is coming through. It is as simple as that. It just works. All the configuration for the network card uh, and the channels and everything on the Pixel Pilot app, uh, just plug and play. Or you can change the VR mode if you've got a VR holder for your smartphone. You can set it into VR mode, which gives you two side-by-side uh, -side screens. Channel is already selected. Current channel 161. And the key is pre-selected to give the link. You don't need to do anything there. It does have recording here, but uh, that doesn't actually do anything. As far as I can see, this is a, a general app that applies to other systems as well, I guess. Um, so there we go. That is uh, totally plug and play to this stage anyway. So I've pulled out the SD card and plugged it into my computer, and we can have a look at that now. And you can see we've got a user.ini file and a GS key. If we open that user.ini file uh, in a text editing 
program I'm using BB Edit here. You can see you can get all the configuration in sort of text form and any of these red values here you can change. Uh, so at the moment we're on channel 161. Uh, you can choose say 165 would be 5, 58, 25, etc. Whatever, but 161 is the channel you want. Uh, but let's go down. You can change from H.264 to H.265. You can change the different resolutions. Let's change it to, say, 1080 /60. That'll be my preferred value. We'll just replace that there. And then when we, when we pop the card back in, uh, it should read these values and use them instead. Bit rate. Something about records equals true or false here. Uh, I'm not too sure what that does. It doesn't actually make anything record as far as I can see. But there are other things we can. All the other values we can change. Mirror, rotate, contrast, hue, saturation, luminance, uh, protocol, OSD protocol, and volume of the audio recording. So we just enter the values we want here, pop the card back in, and it should make the configuration changes. This is totally ready to put on the plane and go out for a fly, as long as you can fly from your screen like that. To record it, I would have to use screen recording on the phone. Even though it has an SD card in the video transmitter, it's not for recording video at this stage. That's very exciting, and uh, it'll even be more exciting when we can get the proper video receiver uh, up and running, and when that is released in the near, near future. Very good. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.